I like it. All right, it is time to get started with our training. Are you ready, Squirrel? Put your finger to the wall. Yeah, squirrel's ready. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all trying to do? What y'all trying to do? Let's do it. All right. You gotta get down, buddy. Uh, 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 showtime, showtime. Guess who's back again? All right, good morning. Tuesday, Wednesday, when Wednesday. So I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so good. To, good morning, everybody. Um, it is. Uh, it is Wednesday. Welcome to our daily huddle. We've got um, uh, stuff to talk about today. So let's get into it. So we have. Um, kind of a piggyback on yesterday's conversation and talking about just the, uh, the education process inside of just, not just network marketing, our business and our careers and our lives and having that be a big focal point. And it's the, and the people that I see that are consistently learning, consistently growing, but really that focus on uh, just getting better, period. And the kind of the conversation of failing forward and just willing to just kind of fudge this up and you know, and not really worried about exactly what's going to happen. Be willing to look embarrassed like time and time again. And that whole kind of process that we're going to be going through. And, and yesterday's conversation really kind of sparked a lot of things for me because it, it re really kind of reminded myself of how dedicated to, to learning and education that I was. And when we look at it, it was a conversation I've had with many people. It's like if you find people that have had 20, 30, 40, 50 years of love and passion in their marriage, it's, it's not by accident. It's just not, you know, when you find people that have had 20, 30, 40, 50 years of health and fitness and energy and vitality, it's just not by accident, you know? And when you find people that have had financial success and, you know, for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, regardless of the economic situation that's happening, regardless of what season that we're in, if we're in an up economy, if we're in a down economy that are consistently winning, it's, it's not by accident. There are these certain habits and habitual things that people are doing on a regular basis that start, you know, leading to those success and those kind of daily habits. And, and one of the things that I just, I hope that you take on, and I know that I, um, I'm always talking about this because I just, I think it's really important here is kind of a, a focus on education and becoming a professional inside of our business. And I think that's where most people end up getting stuck and frustrated. Our business can be incredibly frustrating. How many of you guys have been frustrated in your business at some point? If you're not raising your hand, you lie about other things too. So, um, I mean, it is, it's, a, it's, it's, it can be frustrating, right? I think the reason why I have no hair is because of network marketing. Um, I am convinced I have gone bald, not because of genetics, no, not because my dad's bald, not because everyone else is bald. It's because of network marketing. Um, so, and, and part of that is not network marketing's fault. It's not Secret's fault. It's my own frustration with the process of wanting it to go faster, of wanting to be there quicker. How many of you guys want to be further in your business than you are right now? Show of hands. That is unanimously, everybody. Isn't that interesting, right? Okay. I, and that's one of the things I think sometimes we need to just kind of take a step back and, and applaud where we've come. It's not being satisfied with where we are, but also um, be, giving ourselves a little bit of credit and grace for being where we are. I want you guys to understand that you are going to be frustrated with where you are in the journey 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm just letting you guys know that is what you're going to experience in your entire career. Uh, I know. Doesn't that sound exciting? Aren't you guys just jazzed about this conversation of just being like, yes, I can't wait to be in 99% frustration. No, I, and I don't mean that in, in a negative, in, in necessarily a negative way, but I can tell you because the nature of the people that are on this call, if you're on a daily huddle, if you're part of Secret, if you're part of uh, this organization, then you're somebody who wants to live life at the highest level. Agreed? Yes. Can we all kind of agree at that? Right? We want something more. We want something bigger. We want something better. Therefore, we're always looking for the next mountain to climb. We're always looking for the next achievement to hit. We're always looking for the next level of success to get to. So there is kind of that not, never stopping, never, move, never, never, never ending process of growth. However, what that does is it also makes us feel like we always should be further than we are. Right. And I just want you to just kind of go understand, look, you're, you're doing good. 
like you're here <laughs> like we're on we're on this together and to you know take it it's not take a second to smell the roses i don't think that's what it really is um but to just appreciate how far you've come so i just want you to take a second here and i want you to visualize this because this kind of came up from a conversation i had because it made me realize where i was 18 years ago and who i was 18 years ago and the thoughts i had 18 years ago and the thinking i had 18 years ago and for many of you your journey didn't start 18 years ago but I want you to think about when your journey started with secret or your journey started a year ago. Think about how much more that you know now than you did a handful of months ago. Think, I mean, just think about that. Like how much further you've grown, how much information you've been able to learn, how many things that you've been able to take on that you've been able to absorb that you didn't even know that period of time ago. And I just, um, and if you, if you look at that, I, I hope that gives you maybe a little bit of satisfaction, a little bit of joy of going, wow, you know what? <laughs> a little bit of this for me, please. Um, you know, like I've, like I, I've really done some things here and maybe I haven't seen the, the fruit, the, the kind of the fruit from the harvest that I've been planting, but I do see that if I, if I continue to cultivate, if I continue to plant my seeds, if I continue to do this, like, yeah, but this, this, I can see the natural progression of this and I don't want you to get off of that elevator. So, Kind of going back to what it is. I I, I got my uh, original, my first, my first ever notebook of network marketing that I took trainings on, and this was so exciting. So this was September twentieth, two thousand and two, uh, that I uh, I took these notes, and um, um, <laughs> so and, and I want to kind of go over a couple things here with you because I thought they were interesting. So this is where don't look down the mountain, always look up the mountain of your goal of where you're headed, right? But he also talked about the book Think and Grow Rich. And this was the first introduction. I put a star by this. And this is when I bought the book Think and Grow Rich. How many of you guys own a copy of Think and Grow Rich? Yes. Oh, look at that, Lisa. Well done. All right. So it was like we planned it. Um, so if you haven't owned, if you don't own a copy of Think and Grow Rich, make sure you go into Amazon and buy that bad boy. Number one. Number two, you got to read it. Now, I remember when I bought this book at 19 years old, uh, or no, I, I lied. I just turned 20 because my birthday is September 1st. Um, so Virgo's rock. Hashtag awesome people. Um, but when um, I bought the book and I remember reading it, it was, uh, it was a struggle for me because I'd never read anything like this before. And I remember getting through the first couple of chapters going like, uh, I think I get it. I don't get it. There's a message. I'm supposed to find, what's the, you know, I remember, and it was, that was kind of the beginning of it for me. And since then, generally speaking, I had a little bit of a gap, but I read Think and Grow Rich usually about once a year, um, if not once every two years. And I usually do it towards the beginning of the year. And it is such a spectacular book. And part of it is um, why I learned to study six-figure income earners is basically what Napoleon Hill did was he studied successful people. He took the 500 wealthiest people in the world and studied them. But um, in this, I just want to go over a few of my notes here. I talked about that false evaluations appearing real is basically the word for fear, right? But he also talked about how motion creates emotion. And their wealthy people use three different things. Wealthy people use three different things. They use other people's ideas, other people's efforts, and other people's money. So I started learning really the concept of leverage when I was just 20 years old. To climb Mount Everest, you must have a team. Nobody does it alone. So this was all, these were all kind of philosophies that started getting instilled into me. You're not going to be wealthy, okay, by doing it by yourself, right? So you're also not going to get wealthy doing what broke people do. So it, this was kind of the conditioning of things that started happening in my life. So our business is very simple. Okay. So we retail products and we recruit people to retail products. So retail products is relatively easy. Recruiting, not so easy. Uh, and so they started teaching me that recruiting was a skill set and understanding the process of recruiting. So there was a very big focus on learning to become a very good recruiter. And one of the reasons why is in my first company, there was no uh, customer program that was an incentive program, like an influencer or a host or a rewards program. So if you didn't, if, if you weren't recruited, you were like a dead end because a customer wasn't going to introduce you to more customers because there was no reason for them to, which company should do that. That would have been a good idea for them. Uh, but I talked about how when you're out there is to be normal. So to be excited, but be normal. And we, we had to highlight this one. And the example was 
uh, was 007. <laughs> I was being trained to be a secret agent. I love it. Um, so 007, you want to be calm, cool, and collected. It was like, don't be Terminator, be 007. So Terminator, where he's like coming in and it's like, caw, 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 and he's taking out everybody. It's like, and people can see you and, and hear you coming a mile away. Where 007, he sneaks in, you know, he has his martini, he dances with the girl and he steals the jewels and you don't even know he's gone and everyone's like, what happened, right? And it was a little bit of that. It's like being able to identify situations, adapt into situations um, and being like a secret agent, <laughs> right? So, but be excited, get the products, okay? Um, I started writing, I, I don't know, all I know is, okay? Uh, do, 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 okay, people buy stuff on emotion and they justify it with logic. Oh, isn't that true? People buy from emotion and justify with logic. So retail techniques, these things were more mm, eye contact, smiling, nodding, body language. 7% of our communication is words and 90% of it is body language. Um, <laughs> let's see. Objections, they went over objections again. So uh, cold market, warm market. People talk fast, warm market. Let's see, red apples. Oh, okay, no, we already talked, we talked, so a lot of repeat stuff. Scales of influence, right? Help, favor, and opinion. My notes started getting better. Motivatables, okay? And then the first time, ever, oh, my dream list. This was my second dream list. Look, it got bigger, isn't that cool, right? So as my dream list started to expand, I talked about, I wanted a BMW, I wanted DVDs, DVD, oh my gosh. I wanted a jet ski. Um, so I wanted to buy my old house that I grew up in. Uh, I wanted to send my brother to college. I wanted to um, uh, own a dance studio. I, want, I still wanted a Palm Pilot. I got a Palm Pilot. Um, so, and then this was the first weekend that I learned about colors. This was the first weekend that I learned about reds, greens, blues, and yellows and the personality types. This was September 2002, and I turned about it. So greens were the conservatives, professionals. They were usually dressed business, not flashy. They were clean cut, usually well-groomed, not a lot of emotion. A lot of times they would carry a briefcase or a portfolio, right? So these were kind of the Bill Gates. I learned about the blues. The blues were very flashy. They were loud dressers. They had you know, new hairdos all the time. They had bright makeup. They would smile a lot. They were outgoing. They loved to be flattered. Uh, they loved to be touched. They were kind of the crazy life of the party types of people. I learned about reds. Reds were people that usually dressed sharp. They wore a jewelry like gold and platinum. They were very clean cut. They had an aggressive handshake. They were confident. These people were usually about, uh, all about money or status um, or ego. Uh, these are ones that you want to challenge. You want to challenge reds. Then I learned about yellows. They said very casually dressed. Usually if they wore jewelry, it was going to be silver. They had usually long hair. Well, that's weird. I didn't know that one. I didn't remember that one. Uh, you find facial hair. Interesting. Weird. Uh, very natural, organic, more soft-spoken, very friendly. Um, and uh, so I started learning about how to communicate with these different people. So from Reds, they were very power oriented, very fast paced. They value, what have you done? They, these are questions that they wanna do. You wanna challenge them. Blues are activity oriented, activity oriented. So they mistake activity with productivity. They said they're always late. <clears> Their <throat> cars are always a mess. Um, so, and uh, they hate it when you are mad at them. They hate it when you're mad at them. Non-threatening, they require a lot of attention. Uh, yellows are usually more slow paced, uh, but you wanna support their ideas. They're really relationship oriented. They love recognition and they love approval for yellows. And then with greens, they were very slow paced. They're married more documented. Truth is very important. Okay, very rational and evidence oriented. Do not over exaggerate with greens, it said here. Do not over, um, uh, an example I remember they would say is when uh, you say like this person knows like 110% of the facts, greens would hate that because there's no such thing as 110% of the facts because that's not an accurate fact. <laughs> there's no more than 100%. But also the reds, Love that stuff, okay? Because the reds are just big and whatever it is, right? So 
Then we went through, so objections. Did you guys enjoy some of the objections that we went over yesterday? Do you guys remember those? So, and uh, some of them I thought were great. Some of them I was like, woohoo, uh, that's a zinger for you. Uh, but uh, um, objections went through here. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Here's interesting. So yeah, let's see if I can find a few that I weren't in here from before. So when he talked about some objections, so let's, let's talk a little bit about objections here. Okay, um, he said no time. Uh, so when you had no time, one of the questions it would ask is how long has that been the case? So if you're writing down some of these objections, so how long has that been the case? I say, well, if you do the same thing that you're doing now in five years from now, do you think you'll have more or less time? It's a valid question, right? To, for someone to really kind of think about when it comes to time, no money, kind of similar situation. But, uh, we did the car keys yesterday. Do you guys remember the car keys? Right, so if I could, if I gave you a brand new car, could you come up with the money to get started with 24 hours? Okay, um, which was interesting because it allowed people to really see that even if they didn't uh, have the money, that they could find it. And what it does is it helps eliminate the objection. So it lets both of it gets us both on the same page of understanding that this isn't about the money to get started. It's about the belief as to what's going to happen if I find the money or I or I spend the money. Okay, so we have a belief issue, not a money issue, 99% of the time in that. Okay. So it <laughs> looks too, too good to be true. What if, you, what if it was and you didn't find out? Ooh, I like that one. Um, so uh, I want to think about it. So wh I, when someone says, I want to think about it, I want you guys to look at this. When someone says, I need to think about it, what they're doing generally is they're trying to find out or think their way through how it's going to work. This is usually where people are. So when somebody says, I need to think about it, here's one of the questions I love to ask. Say, well, what are your concerns? Because I need to think about it isn't, I need to think about it positively. You guys know that, right? Like it's never like, well, let me think about all the positive things that are gonna happen. They're always trying to look at what's gonna work because we live in, generally speaking, most people veer towards po negative more than positive. If you don't believe that, just look at our news. Um, so I can tell you what's gonna be on today. It's gonna be negative. And I know tomorrow's gonna be too, it's, it's gonna be negative. In case you were wondering the forecast of the news for the entire week, it, it's gonna be negative case you were wondering. Uh, that's why we always say CNN stands for constant negative news. Uh, and we were just like, just turn that stuff off. It's just hard to get away from it today. It's just, it's just so in your face. And, you know, and social media used to be your escape from, you know, mainstream media. And now you can't even get away from it there anymore. Right. It's like, I guess we're all gonna, let's just all get on TikTok. Like that's the thing now, apparently, I guess. Um, but when he talks about it, I need to think about it. What are your concerns? And if you can start identifying those concerns, but here's another way in helping overcome objections that usually would help me. When somebody says something and gives me an objection and then we help kind of overcome that challenge, whatever it is. Here's one of the things that I generally would do is if somebody gives me another objection, um, here's a great question to ask, okay? So is this the only thing holding you back from getting started? Write this question down. Is this the only thing holding you back from getting started? If they say yes. So in other words, and I might even, if they say yes, I'll repeat it again, but just phrase it a little bit differently. Say, so if we were able to figure this issue out, there'd be nothing, from, nothing holding you back from joining. If we got this handled, meaning let's say it's the money thing. The only thing that's stopping me from getting started is I just don't have the money. Okay, so if we were able to find the money or get the money, that's the only thing that's holding you back from getting started. So what we're doing is we're isolating the objection. So, and what that allows me to do is this, if I know that if I can overcome this objection, this person should get started. So we can help figure that out. The other thing is when they're saying, I need to think about it, okay, is I found out that if I'm really combative with, I need to think about it, I need to think about it, it just means I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm scared about something. I'm not understanding something. I don't understand. But again, what they're trying to do is they don't need another presentation. They need, need more security, okay? They need more security. They need more confidence in getting started, okay? So here's why in the presentation, and we're gonna do this tomorrow. Tomorrow, this leads me into a great topic for tomorrow, is we're gonna talk about presenting secret. Now, I know a lot of you right now is your, your initial introduction to uh, a lot of the people that are coming in is more from an attraction marketing standpoint um, but, and then at some point we're going to show them secret. Here's what I have found. 
is when I've done, God, I don't even know how many thousands and tens of thousands of probably presentations I've done over the past 18 years is this. Here's what I've generally found out in presenting. If somebody can think of a few people they believe will join the business and or buy the product, they will join. Meaning it's not about selling the person that you're in front of. It's about them believing a few people they know will probably buy or join. If a few people they know will buy or join, they themselves are much more likely to join. Okay. So you can sell somebody on the products because that's them making the decision. But if we're saying to people, listen, you can be successful because there are people out there that will buy or join this company. They need to identify who those people are to easily make a decision. So in my presentation, I'm not talking about them. You'll see when I do my presentation talking about the business, I'm always talking about other people they know and other examples of people they know that would likely buy or likely join. Because if at the end of the presentation, they can go to themselves, yeah, okay, all right, these products seem great, I'd like to buy them. And I know some people based on everything I heard that will probably buy or probably join, if they can get that probably, probably, you're much more likely to get a yes for a recruit. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up, okay? And I'm gonna walk through how I do that in my presentation and give you tons of examples and tons of analogies that I've used that have helped me um, become a recruiter. And the reason why for me is this, is I spent um, pretty much my entire life learning how to recruit and develop organizations. And, um, and I love it, I love, I love recruiting because recruiting can absolutely change someone's life because I was recruited. And if I wasn't recruited, oh my gosh, I have no idea where I would be. Um, I need a salary. Here's another objection. I need a salary. Okay. Um, and uh, this was the, this was the response. I'm just reading you my responses, tell you if I believe in them or not, but it was, um, do you know anyone that got wealthy off of a salary? That's an interesting answer uh, because there are some, I mean, you can get wealthy off of a salary depending on the salary, but it's pretty tough, right? So let's see what else. Um, <laughs> only, the peop only the people at the top make the money, all right? So <laughs> only people at the top make the money. You say, you're absolutely right. So how many people do you know that have started at the bottom of the company you work for that are at the top? That's an So listen, if you want, here's what's great about CD secret or network marketing, you get to start at the top of your own company and you get to fill it in. So you always get to be at the top of your business. Isn't that cool? Um, so <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't have a car. Uh, I don't want to do sales. See, uh, I'll see how you do first. Um, I'll see how, I'll see how you do first. They, they, they didn't have any, there was no good response. Um, how do you make money? Make money. These are all ones I did yesterday. Um, the marketplace is already saturated. This was an interesting one, which obviously is so not true, but I was working with a company that had been in business for 30 years. So market is already saturated. And um, so this analogy that he used for saturation uh, was he said, um, uh, he asked him, are, are you Christian or do you know Christians? And he said, are they still recruiting? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's kind of funny, it's kind of funny. Um, so, and he said, well, listen, dad, as far as I know, there's, <laughs> I would never say that, but it's funny. Um, so, um, friends tried and failed, you know, so uh, do you always compare yourself to people who have failed? Interesting. So, like I said, a lot of these are pretty aggressive. I bet you could probably tell if it was a guy or a girl or what the color was of the person that was doing this training. <laughs> so, um, but this was interesting. You talked about low maintenance versus high maintenance teams. Okay. Low maintenance versus high maintenance teams. Low maintenance. So I talked about how low maintenance teams were self-motivated. They were team players. They would always go to trainings. They would pay attention. They were problem solvers. They were coachable, energetic, positive, and accountable. High maintenance teams are people that were whining, negative, unteachable, made excuses, never go to trainings, you know, save me a seat type of people. They focused on problems and they were roller coaster riders. Okay? So, but one of the things that uh, they had to start doing, this was September, is to start, start to put together your Christmas list. Okay. 
um, and building out your Christmas list, which I remember. Now, I'm going to talk, I'll just kind of finish up today talking to you guys about something that none of you guys have ever experienced inside of Secret, okay? And, um, oh man, there's so much good stuff in here. Oh my God, I never knew. I totally stole that from Tony Robbins. Wow, look at that. Anyway, okay. Um, let's wrap up with this. So we have a time frame here. And what we're doing is this, is I know that we have a kind of this uh, um, uh, account accountability that's happening right now. And what we're going to be doing in about three minutes is we're going to be ending this call and we're going to be going into our accountability call for our Hawaii coaching. And this is for those of you guys that are going to be reporting in on your numbers as to where you are and what you need. So we're going to stop this call and then we're going to start that call for those of you guys that want to participate in being accountable towards Hawaii. Now, uh, we're going to be doing this each Wednesday, which is awesome. But what we're leading into is Hawaii is leading into, we have eight, um, I'm sorry, um, uh, August 8th is when we have the announcement, mega announcements from the company, products, new programs, all of that. That's leading into us going through those announcements in August, which is going to lead us through September and October with people qualifying for Hawaii and all the new announcements, which are going to be huge, which are going to lead us into November. And in November, at the end of November, there's a very special day in November called Black Friday. Now, most of None of you have been in secret long enough to even know what that is. Black Friday statistically has been the biggest sales day of the year, not just for secret, but most people in the world. Now, if you guys know, most things on Black Friday are transitioning from more of a physical based retail to online retail, kind of from Black Friday to Cyber Monday. More and more people are buying online to kind of skip out on the crazy lines and all that other stuff, right? And it is a day of shopping. And when you look at the statistics, as to how much people spend on Black Friday, it is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so the uh, how much the ama average American spends, how much America spends on this particular day or this particular weekend. And we'll go through some of the statistics. Now, one of the things is secret products are the most amazing gift products. And what we do is we do incredible specials for Black Friday absolutely incredible specials for Black Friday. And we've done it every single year. And every single year we have hit it out of the park like crazy. And what we do is we give access to the details of our Black Friday special, usually at the beginning of the week, like on the Tuesday before Black Friday. So what that means is you have the specials to be able to collect orders and information from people as to what they wanna buy, but not just what they wanna buy for themselves, is knocking out their shopping list, knocking out their Christmas list, and getting it done very easily and conveniently. The other things that will happen is you're going to be able to kind of give the gift of secret this year, but I want you to think about right now, let's say you had 10 customers, just for an example. Let's say you have 10 customers, and those 10 customers are going to buy on Black Friday because they love secret products, and they're going to get products that they, and gifts, and add-on products, and bonus buys, and all kinds of great stuff, and discounts for Black Friday, number one. But those people that are buying your customers, do they all have a list of people they're gonna buy for this season? And the answer is yes, right? So what we learn to do is convert the list and maybe not the specific list, because a lot of people have something specific they're getting for a friend, family, uh, uh, I'm sorry, specific for like mother, father, brother, sister, you know, daughter, son. But how many of you guys have a list of at least 10 to 20 people that you know you're gonna buy something for but you don't necessarily know exactly what to buy for them, right? And especially the guys. The guys are the easiest, quote unquote, targets because you can save our lives. Because uh, what we do is this, we procrastinate because we don't know what to buy people, especially the, a lot of the females on our list. And what we do is we walk aimlessly around the mall, which are almost none are available anymore, and just walk around going like, I wonder what she's gonna like. And we really have a, like, a number where like, we know we're gonna spend $20, we're gonna spend $30 on a particular item. And we already know we have it kind of set aside. So what we've learned to do is convert that gift list into secret dollars and show, listen, hey, if I could show you how you could save 40, 50, 60% on your shopping list, knock out majority of your people on your list and be guaranteed that whoever you give this to in an already wrapped box, because we do these beautiful boxes. I don't, I wonder if I have one. Uh, I don't have one right here with me. 
So these amazing gift boxes where it's already done for you, if I could help you knock out your shopping list, you wouldn't have to leave and it'd already be done for you, would that be helpful? And most of the people are like, oh yes, you know, uh, praise baby Jesus, right? So what I'm super excited about for that is my first Black Friday, we cleared, uh, I was in secret for like a month. And I think I made like $400. Yes, Donna, there are boxes like that and other, other types of uh, boxes. So um, what we did was uh, about 300, almost $400 on Black Friday. The next Black Friday, when we did this, we had a bigger organization, which you guys have time to prep for right now. And I made a little over $7,000 on Black Friday, which, I mean, guys, that's, that's incredible, right? The next Black Friday, I made $17,000 on Black Friday in 24 hours. Yeah, in a day. The next Black Friday, I made $23,000. The next Black Friday, I made 30 grand on the day. Guys, I've never made less than $25,000 on Black Friday since, like on the day. I've maxed out the comp plan because you can only earn 25,000 a week in the comp plan on team commissions. And then after that, it's just check match, which is why it's 30,000 usually plus. So now how has that happened? <laughs> is a lot of people have started to understand this. I want you guys to be prepping for this. You guys have never experienced a holiday season with secret products yet. It is glorious. So, right? And now the way that this happens is how many customers and how many agents are you gonna have before Black Friday hits? Many of you, what'll happen is this. I have people that call me for the week of Black Friday and they already have applications in hand for their next rank or their next two ranks before Black Friday. Because on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're taking orders from all their customers and they're accumulating all their customers. If you have one customer that buys 10 gifts and let's just say one customer spends 500 bucks, that's 500 points on one side of your business from one customer. If you have 10 customers do their shopping with you, that could be 5,000 points from just you having 10 customers that buy for their friends. What if that's one agent on your left? That's 5,000 in points on your left. What if you have another agent? If you have 10 agents on your left, 10 agents on your right that are all really cranking out Black Friday properly, this is where you see people go silver, gold, platinum, go from nothing to platinum in a day. It's insane. Um, so I don't want to get too excited about that. We're going to talk about presenting. because So that's why I really want us to have a huge focus on, on introducing more people to Secret so they can participate in the August 8th wave that's hitting leading into the Black Friday bonanzas. Um, so... Hopefully that makes sense. So we are going to end the training for today on this and move into our accountability training. So stop recording.